Hello, this is Sean Mullery from Electronic Engineering at IT Sligo. And in this short lesson, what I'm going to show you is the tools, the development tools that we will be using for this Embedded Programming 201 subject, which is the MPLAB X and the XC8 uh, compiler. So I'm going to show you where you can get those tools for yourself uh, if you're if you're uh, wanting to use them at home. Um, so where to download them. I'm going to show you how to set up a very basic program and it's, it, it will be very basic, literally just the shell of a program and we'll write a very, very small amount of uh, C code as well and just show you the compile process. Again, that program won't do very much. Uh, it'll be just to show you the compile process. So those are the three things that we're going to do. That's all that you'll see in the PowerPoint for the moment uh, because the rest will all be uh, shown in the, the, the Moodle subject or in an MPLAB X itself. So uh, here is the Moodle subject um, for the embedded programming, and we've got lots of links there. I'll just turn editing off so you see it from the from your own point of view. And um, down here at the bottom of this, now this this may change with time, but uh, it'll always be up in this section. Um, I'll have a link here to MPLAB X to download it, and also the XCA compiler to download. Now it's important to realise the differences between these two. I mentioned in a previous video, so hopefully you remember that. Um, we have an integrated development environment. That's what MPLAB X is. It's an integrated development environment. And in order for it to do its job, it's got text editors, it's got debuggers, simulators, all that sort of thing in it. But it can also um, operate with lots of different compilers. So you can decide which compiler you want to use um, for a particular hardware setup that you have. So the XCA compiler, uh, which is from the same company from Microchip as, as MPLAB X is from, it can be used with either the 16 series uh, PIC microcontrollers or the 18 series PIC microcontrollers. Now, previously, or up until quite recently, you had to use two separate compilers for those. They're starting to phase those out. That's the high tech compiler and the MCC 18 compiler. They're starting to phase those out um, and they recommend that you switch to the XCA compiler. So that's where we're gonna start from using that. But you need to install both of these pieces of software in order to be able to uh, start development um, for uh, for this subject. So just, um, just open a new link here. Sorry, I've... Um, what I'll do is I'll just click it in one go to you see it, so it'll hopefully, uh, yeah, here it is there. And uh, that has opened up um, the website for this. And down here, down towards the bottom of this, it's actually not, I have to click on the thing. So I click on the free download here and it opens it up. So it's obviously, sorry, it's, it's, it's on one of these tabs here. So depending on what sort of system you want to install it on. Now in the college, this will already be installed uh, for anybody that's using the machines in the college, uh, any of the labs that you're doing. Uh, but if you want to install it at home, either to decide whether you're putting it on a Windows PC, on a Linux PC or on a Mac. Uh, now I've tried it on the Mac and I've tried it on Windows. I haven't tried it on Linux yet. Um, the on the Mac, it, it, there will be slight differences. So just be aware of that. Uh, I haven't fully tested on the Mac, so I don't know what minor little differences there might be that might throw you off if you were doing a practical assessment at some point later on. Uh, but just be aware of that. But if you mainly use a Mac, then it's, it's perfectly fine to download it onto that. Um, but as I say, in the college, you will be using uh, it on a Windows uh, system. So use that link there to download. It's, as you can see, it's sizable enough, 358 megabytes. So make sure you have a good um, download speed uh, wherever you are before you try that. Um, and you can download it, uh, download it from there. Um, and install it, okay? And it's a fairly simple install, there's nothing major to it. Now, I've also put a direct link to the XCA compiler, although you could have got to it from that website there. Um, so again, if we go down here, um, and it's actually down on the uh, on the left-hand side here, I've just gone by it, um, we can see the downloads for the XCA compiler for either Windows, Linux, or um, OS X, which is the uh, the Mac version. You can also download the XCA 16 compilers and the 32 compilers, but we won't be covering those. They're for uh, different levels of the PIC microcontroller. I won't, I won't be covering those. Uh, I'll just click the Windows here, and you can see that that's all actually already started the download, so it's direct from there. Executable. I'll just cancel that because I've downloaded it many times already, so there's no need to do it again. So once that's downloaded, then you you install that as well, and then that should be available from within MPLAB X. Uh, that's hopefully what will be the situation. So 
just go back. Uh, so this is uh, MPLAB X when it's opened. I'll just shut it down and uh, we'll go back to the desktop here. And you can see here where I have the MPLAB X installed here. There, there are two other things that come with MPLAB here. Don't worry about those for the moment. Uh, it's the MPLAB X IDE that we want to open. The XEH compiler doesn't necessarily have a, an icon on the desktop, it'll be, um, but it'll be found from inside MPLAB. Okay, so it's opened up there. Now, what I'm gonna show you is just very simply starting up uh, a simple project file. So we'll go for a, um, actually rather than even going for the new project here, you can see that there's, there's some of them open down here, so you can create a new project down there. Okay. Now there are lots of different ways to go through through these for different setups, but uh, the simplest for the moment is if we just start with one of the sample programs and we modify from there. There's very little in the sample programs; they're they're just um, they're just set up nicely. We're going to use the 16 series uh, chips for the moment um, on, until I suggest otherwise. So for for that, you can just click on one of the 16 series chips there click next it's going to install it in a particular location now uh, for, for me on this machine it's going to put in C users Sean MP lab X projects um, generally speaking if you're in the college um, you should really st store these on your H drive if you're not sure what your H drive is when you're in the college if you're new to the college make sure you ask your tutor where the H drive is and uh, they will show you that's a network drive and it means that um, you will have access to it anywhere you you uh, log in if you're one of our online students, uh, then obviously you need to uh, save this on your own machine and make sure it's there. Um, and I would suggest probably not using the usual user's project location. Um, you should maybe put it on uh, on another drive, like put it on the D drive, uh, where you're gonna put all your, um, all your materials. So I'll just uh, come out here myself and I'll do that. So I'll, uh, here on the D drive, I'll put a, a new directory here called uh, MP Lab X Projects. Okay. And as you can see there, it says that it's pick 16 C template one. Again, you can give that a, a, a more normal name. So we'll just call it our, our first, um, MP lab project. You can give it a more meaningful name when there's something specific that you want to do, but for the minute we're really just setting it up. So <clears throat> Okay. And we can see here that uh, we've lots of things open here, but here are the source files and here is where we're going to put the uh, the, the main code, okay, that we want to put in it, okay. So that's set up a, a basic template file. Now there's a few changes we'd like to make to this. For starters here, you can see that uh, up here it says HT pick 16F54. Uh, that actually would use the high tech compiler, which is the compiler that we don't, you probably don't even have installed. Um, so uh, best not to use that. Uh, we want to use the XC8 compiler. Again, um, these are for different types of chipsets. So I'm gonna click the XC8 PIC 16F54 for the minute, which is kind of the base unit for the, the PIC we are going to use. Um, I have clicked that, but it sometimes takes a little bit of a minute for it to take, uh, take effect. If it was on a faster machine, it might happen a bit quicker. So we'll just give that a moment. Okay. And back to here. So, um, the next thing I want to do is I want to tell it exactly what chip we're using. Uh, so it's using the right compiler for this, um, but I want to make sure it's using exactly the right chip. So what I do is I, I right mouse click there on on the project and go down to properties. And as you can see here, we're running in this thing here, and we're um, we're running the XC8 compiler as we can see down here. However, the device is the standard 16F54. Uh, the one I want you to change that to is the 16F88, okay? Now, the 16F88 you'll find in some of, some of your other subjects that you'll be doing, uh, such as the microcontroller programming, that's one of the ones that's available. Um, I think it's one of the ones that's, that's, that's available in multi-SIM, so you may see that again, that 16F88 um, 
but it's but don't get used to a specific piece of hardware because I'll be chopping and changing to other pieces of hardware as we go through the course. Um, what we really want to do in this course is to write embedded software that we can move from one microcontroller to another. So uh, we don't want to get too used to one particular piece of hardware so that that's the only piece of hardware you know. Uh, we want to write software that can run on several pieces of hardware. So uh, do be aware of that. Um, we won't always be using this chip. So be aware of how to change that if we need to. So I'll click apply there so that it's using the, the right one. And that's that's very important because that will then, uh, if you recall back to the video on the preprocessor, um, that will include the correct header file in it to the preprocessed file so that it uh, uses it correctly. Okay. Now, so um, so we've got as far as we've we've downloaded, we've installed it, we've made a very basic. Um, we have a very basic thing open there. And what we're going to do is I'm going to um, write a very small amount of code into this. Um, I'm going to, and don't worry that you don't know what this what this means. Um, if you've never done anything on the pick before, you won't be aware of uh, some of the things that I'm writing in here. That's not a problem. And um, Basically, what I'm doing here is I'm going to write out something specific to a port. Um, so a set of ones and zeros I'm going to send out to the port. The TRISB up here, this is to do with the tri-state uh, settings for a port, which basically tells the port whether it's going to be an input or an output, depending on the, the code that I put in there. Again, don't worry about where I've got that code from. That'll be explained later, uh, although you may, you may have come across it in the past. And this here is where I actually write out a sequence of ones and zeros out to the port um, that we would be able to look at later. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to save that. And remember, this is changing the main.c file. And what I can do is I can just click Run and Build. And that sets the build process running. This is what will create the .hex file uh, in the end, assuming that there are no errors and there are no problems. And it says that the build is successful. It took 20 seconds. So you can see there, even for the tiny bit of code that I had, but obviously there are other files there, but they have very small amounts in them. It still took 20 seconds. It will be faster on a faster machine. I, I happen to be using one of these very compact uh, laptops, which is very easy for me to carry around um, to be able to do my recordings anywhere. Um, hopefully the machines that you will be using will be slightly faster than that. Uh, but do be, do be prepared that it does take a little bit of time to run through the process. Um, and you can see there that the loading is complete and that's 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 all uh, compiled what does it do well that's for another lesson for the moment uh, what we've done in this just to go back to what we said we would do in the um, in the set of uh, in the PowerPoint here uh, so we we looked at how to install how to download and install the XCA compiler and the MPLAB X compiler so just download them run the executable follow the standard instructions it should all be fine um, there may be tiny differences on different machines. Um, we showed you how to set up a very basic uh, program, so a very basic template file there, and what settings to use to set it for a particular piece of hardware, a particular chip. Again, I don't expect you to know anything about those chips yet. And lastly, we just added a tiny little bit of C code and just built, it did a build which ran the compile process and the linking process and so on. And it said that it did it correctly. It doesn't mean that the program does does its job right. It just means that we've wrote the syntax correct. Now, we've wrote so little that it would be very difficult for it to go wrong. But even just getting that far with a new system can have difficulties. So I want you to obviously see that you can get that far yourself on the system first before we start moving on to uh, actually writing something that uh, that does something in particular.